Hello, 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 hello. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's having an awesome weekend. This is 50 pips rocking and rolling. 30th of August 2015. Not making any trade calls or recommendations because you and only you are responsible for the trades you may decide to take. And the fact you're listening to this means you're ready to understand you accept all disclosures and disclaimers on the site, understanding that we're just performing some technical analysis and a learning context for educational purposes only. So, what's going on, guys? So, uh, Welcome to the uh, end of the month, pretty much, right? So Monday's the last trading day of the month. Keep in mind for those of you trading London that effectively, you know, tomorrow London's closed. So that was it in terms of London trade. So it might be a bit of a slow start tomorrow morning, but, you know, we'll have to see how the market reacts following all the wheeling and dealing we had last week, which is a very interesting week. Now, we do have some... Um, Apart from the Monday, which is a bit slower, we do have a lot of interesting data points. I mean, of course, they're going to be kind of on the side uh, because we'll just have to see how the equity market re reacts and settles after those very, very big moves. But we do have an awful lot of China data coming out. We have an awful lot of Australian. We've got New Zealand data coming out. So we've got that rate decision out of um, out of Australia. Most people are thinking probably after the moves we won't get a cut so we could get a bit of a little pop on Aussie. We'll look at that in a minute. But we also have quite a lot of uh, Canadian data, uh, UK data, European data, uh, quite a lot of stuff on the calendar pretty much every single day. And don't forget that also Thursday we've got uh, uh, ECB press conference with Super Mario speaking. So again, I really urge you to familiarize yourself with the uh, data calendar this week because we got a lot of stuff we got those central banks on the wires and to put a little as we like to say the cherry on top of the cake we're going to end it on friday with non-farm payrolls right and then also remember that on friday for the u.s guys we'll be going into a long weekend because it's a labor day weekend so markets u.s markets are closed on monday 7th okay so what to look for? There are, couple, there are a lot of interesting charts. I'm going to try and keep this one, this uh, fairly brief, but there are a lot of interesting charts. So I think one thing which is definitely uh, interesting to keep an eye out that we should look at is because we do have that RBA decision too, is to look at uh, what's going on on uh, Australian dollar, right? So basically what we discussed last week was the fact that, you know, in those morning radars we did on the blog is that it's very, very tricky. Once we see something like this happen, right, you've got this very aggressive move, right? Whether they're, um, you know, low liquidity prints or whatever, as long as it prints, it's still real. So once you get this kind of action, it's very, very tricky to play inside this range that has been formed. So what we say is even though there may look like there are opportunities, it's very tricky to tra trade inside that range and you'll have to consider you know, what will happen. But right now, most of the people will trying to be playing on the fact that that is some kind of an intermediate uh, bottom that's been put in. Now, keep in mind, going into the RBA statement, I think in terms of more of a little relief off these lows, unless we move all the way back up into, uh, sorry, rather above the 74s, this is still going to potentially stay very, very heavy. So right here, I think there's a fairly big range which with a fairly lo uh, large room to see uh, moves take place this week. So I would say the upside, what we'd be looking at is the 74s and the downside is going to be basically those lows we set in um, last week. So basically the range is very, very wide. Now it's not it's not something that should surprise participants, you know, it's just you have to find a way of dealing with this. So usually what we always say when, you know, when you have a lot of volatility where the range really expands, you know, we used to we, we tend to tackle that just by, you know, trading smaller. Right. Um, and because of the increased volatility, because of the moves and everything, it'll tend to play out the same. It's a way of keeping your risk the same as the moves tend to get bigger. So those are the levels I would be looking at going into the week. Uh, I would be calling basically these uh, 72s pivotal, and you've got about you know, uh, two, 200 pips to the upside, 200 pips to the downside, fairly, uh, fairly wide range going on there. So we'll have to see what happens there. Now, 
In terms of a couple of other interesting charts, is if you look at gold, what's happening on gold. So basically, we talked about this reversal here on gold. As far as we're concerned, we're still pretty much in a fairly defined range. We consider this a false break out of the 1200 1150 1100 range so we're still stuck there and we expect that, that 1150 to be pivotal so in terms of short signal you know this negative daily close right at the 100 with the 200 dma here completely in line was uh you know for the shorts pretty much a gift for the gods for a move back down and now the shorter term cycles in terms of that are trying to hold this with uh bids coming in at the 50 back of the move off those lows to that pretty pure sell entry and right here the game is on right so what i would say here is still expect a lot of wheeling and dealing on gold as long as this low here is secure and as long as we don't get a daily close below here i would suspect that we've still got some unfinished business at that 1150 and that we'll have to see the game played out here in the same way we'll look at it in a second as we looked at on aussie or we'll see on the es the ranges are very wide and we would expect a lot of velocity of move inside these broader ranges that have been set we still expect this week to see an awful lot of volatility even in very very big ranges but wouldn't be surprised to see us end pretty much neutral on the week so we'll have to see what happens there so since we were talking about the es what's going on on the es so let's get that um let's get that chart up so we got a bit we had a very very aggressive move here and again what we said is once we'd put in this last day here we'd put in this low we said what what we would expect is to see the market try and clip both sides of uh of that day's range and we would suspect that the first extreme that gets tested and fails would lead us to have the opposite extreme tested and a breakout in, in that direction right so what happened so we had a move right back down where we got those lows tested still again opposite side tested completely inside first extreme that got violated with no traction downside so we expect these two levels to be taken out to the upside and a move right back up so twelve thousands attracting okay now as far as we're concerned here we're still going to have a lot of chop inside this range and we expect to see very violent potentially very very quick moves inside this area now as long as we don't trade back above the 2040s we expect sellers to come in and try and cap this down now i think it's a very tricky call because you know if you look at the weekly i mean uh, you know nobody's going to argue with the fact that that was a bullish uh close and a lot of people are going to be looking at this on the monthly right now so on paper, I think you will find people that can make a fairly convincing argument for this to be extremely bullish and that we're going to rip back up and test those highs again. And I think you'll see some people being able to make a fairly good uh, argument on why this is weak and it will be sell the rallies. I think uh, it's a tricky one to call. As far as I see it, I would not be surprised to see this move in either direction now i'm not trying to cop out here i'm just seeing it as a calling it as i see it now i wouldn't be surprised to see this rip hard in either direction uh simply because of all the things we've discussed recently however however the velocity of the move to the downside to us continues to confirm our hypothesis and what we've been discussing pretty much in every single weekly outlook here is that we think it's time to get a much uh, a very good healthy correction now one could argue that this correction is healthy enough we were talking about a move back into the 1950s and 1900s and if that had happened in an orderly manner then we would have been of the opinion that okay it's time to go back and retest those highs but because of the fact that this move lower happened so aggressively we suspect that it's going to be very difficult bar some central bank announcement something out of the fed or something being announced for the market to regain those highs very very quickly so as long as we don't have a day close below these 2040s we still expect to see sellers coming in to the 2000 and we expect this to possibly try and test the downside again 
Now, most likely, as I've been saying, I think we'll see a lot of wheeling and dealing in this whole big range, which will probably confuse a lot of people, which will probably give uh, the bulls a lot more cause to say we're going to rip higher because we can't go lower. It'll get the bears to say, oh, we have to go down hard because we can't rip higher, right? So a lot of people, but I think there'll be a lot of chop and most likely we'll have to wait for some next big, you know, something out of the Fed or something to to, to see what happens and most likely that is going to be sometimes in September but here assumption is for very volatile trading inside a broader range here most likely rallies find sellers and some more some kind of a test of those lows again now what else are we looking at now another chart which we are um, particularly interested in is the crude chart uh, no surprise, we have been uh, uh, bullish on crude. Now, we suspected that we had put in a short-term bottom here uh, on crude. As it came back down here, we we're calling this for to base inside the 55, 50, 50 45, and spend uh, a couple of months here before rotating back up towards that higher move. Now, clearly, that was... Uh, did not materialize so uh, there was plenty of opportunities to trade this to the upside or the downside but the fact that we'd possibly put in uh, a, a low for the year clearly uh, uh, is not the case so we've moved right back down and now we're going to repeat what we said again we think we may have to put in a low in for the year now again uh, sooner or later we may or may not be right with this but that's just the way it goes it's not always that clear to call these now um, again, I think here I would not be uh, surprised to see crude try to continue its correction quickly back up into the 50. But uh, really, unless we start to stabilize above the 55, uh, this is going to continue to hold some kind of a heavy tone and these lows may not be safe at all. So as usual, we expect these bottoms to be complex in, in the same way as we, um, uh, we see the tops being complex, even though the tops tend to have more of a complex nature than the bottoms. Uh, so we'll have to see. Uh, we'll look at the 45 as being a pivotal level for the week. Uh, daily closes above. We'd expect to see price to try and move back into the 50 uh, daily closes below. We'd expect maybe price to go test those lows again. Again, for the newer traders, don't get used to these huge moves. You know, uh, er, people coming to the markets here think it's normal to see 80, 80 handle moves in the ES, you know, uh, crude uh, moving, ripping up four or five bucks at a time. Right. These are <laughs> very, very big moves. OK, so we'll have to see. And, and linked with that, another very interesting chart for us remains the CAD chart. Right. So uh, we'll have to see what happens. But our assumption again here is that uh, we're seeing a lot of ping pong between the 33 and the 32. So 133, 132. Uh, we uh, suspect that we need a daily close below 133. 132 to see the next big move now because we closed here below the 132 even though it's marginal i know we would expect this to try and continue to make its way back to the 31 the current range we're looking at is 131 132 133 high range right we expect this to be putting in a top we expect it to come back into the 131 this week and we expect that to be the big pivotal level that will uh, give us more clarity on the fact if we're continuing to build some kind of a complex top here We're indeed going to rip higher or if we're going to get that bigger correction back into the 129.50s 128s, but clearly right here. We expect a bit more downside at least early on in the week And I know I said I was going to keep this short. I think I'm dragging off. I'll do, we'll do euro one more pair uh, what's going on on euro? So euro, we've seen a lot of euro flows, especially on euro GPB, which being which has been uh, causing some havoc on GPB USD, com confusing a lot of people. Um, we discussed that. You can go back to the um, morning radars or some of the other recordings. We discussed that right here on euro. So our assumption was that basically we'd put in a top with that rip higher there. Right. So um, we discussed uh, what I said, I, I believe, on Twitter. We also said and on those morning radars, if you're having a trouble looking at that, just just flip over to the four hours. And that's where you can easily get a feel 
for what we talked about, those extremes being set on Euro and Euro GPB. So, right, that, that was it, right? We're expecting most of the shorts to play on that and for time to see a healthy correction, right? And if you go back and look at the Euro GPB chart, very similar, right? There you go. Same thing, those extremes put in and the market to play off those for a healthy correction. Now you can find the chart on the blog. We're also looking for Euro GPB to correct right back down into the next support. Actually, let me not be silly since we're here, we might as well show it. Here's the chart. We're looking for this. You know, as we said, we expected all these rallies to be, especially on those month end flows, on those fixing flows on Euro GPB on Thursday, Friday, to be sell opportunities to play that move right back down into support. So that's working quite nicely. So, what's going on on Euro here? So, Euro is trying to come back here. This is another one where you can make a case for uh, a bigger correction is still in play or heavy. The way we'd be looking at it is, is still the same right uh, our pivotal levels are down into that 1090 1070s those are levels further down and as long as the market can hold below there then we suspect the market can try and aim to make moves back into the 115s but we suspect we'll see a lot of aggressive chop here but that ultimately will try and resolve back down to the downside keep in mind we've got super mario on the wires on deck on the dance floor so heads up for that but this could be very whippy and very very choppy inside the range okay i think don't forget that there are bigger structural forces at work and those will likely come back into play as we've been discussing once uh, once things settle a little bit okay so i hope that was good i tried to work on the sound some people were complaining that the sound on the last recording was a bit low so hopefully this one should be better and as usual thanks so much for listening if you like the content uh, just uh, feel free to share it or retweet it and uh, apart from that i'll see you around uh, twitter guys have an awesome one thanks for listening bye bye guys